Hi everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, I want to answer to something which I see in the comments quite a lot. I often get asked, how can I become a better developer? What should I build? Do you have any demo projects I can build? Well, as it turns out, right now I don't. But in this video, I want to give you a good guideline on how you can grow as a developer. I'll not just mention some demo projects you could build, but I want to give you the three key things I think are very important to become a better developer and to keep on growing because that never stops. Obviously, every developer always has to improve, has to become better, has to learn new trends and all that stuff. So in this video, I can hopefully help you understand how you can become a better developer and how you can keep up with the latest trends. So how do you grow as a developer? And grow really is a broad term here, of course. Well, growing for one means that you have to practice. You have to become better. You have to fall into certain traps. You have to solve certain problems so that you know how to solve them the next time you encounter them. Or sometimes you'll even fall into the same trap again the next time. But at some point of time, you know how that specific feature you need in your next application, how that can be implemented in a working way. So practicing as always in life is key and that never stops. I obviously also practice a lot. Every new course I create is a practice. Every project I create is a practice. And that is indeed something which you always have to keep on doing because the industry also doesn't stop. It also keeps evolving. The next building block, besides practicing and learning certain patterns and how to code therefore, is that you have to challenge existing best practices and solutions. Best practices obviously exist for a good reason and therefore using them generally is not a bad idea. But you will see how best practices emerge in this video. We'll talk about how they emerge and why it still might be worth questioning them. Doesn't mean that all best practices are bad, but you should always be open-minded and come up with your own patterns and solutions and then validate them against best practices. So I'll also talk about this in this video. And now the last building block into which I'll dive in this video is the one which also helps you um, stay up to date you have to discuss and contribute. So you have to dive into the community. And that does not mean that you have to write like 10 posts on YouTube or Facebook or anywhere on a daily basis. It just means that you should be in the community, that you should read about new trends, that you should discuss with other people, help other people. So we'll talk about this in this video too. Now let me start with the practice part. What exactly does practicing mean? Practicing for me mainly means that you should build dummy projects or part of projects like an authentication flow or a dummy REST API or a dummy file upload. So basically what I also try to do here on this channel, um, that is something what you should do on your own. Set your own goals, your own challenges and build stuff. This is how you learn the most. Now there are roughly two kinds of applications you could build or that is what I recommend if people ask me if I have ideas what they should build. Well, the ideas are already out there. Build simplified versions of popular websites or apps. And that does not just mean the big ones like Amazon. If you find a website which is interesting to you, where a certain feature is interesting to you, well, then try to duplicate it. You can even dive into the source code of this page if you need some inspiration. It's probably minified, but you can unminify it to a certain extent and that could be a good starting point. Or you try it from scratch. So simply pick certain websites you like or the big common names everyone knows like Facebook and so on and start rebuilding very simplified clones of them. If you're cloning Facebook, obviously you don't want to clone the entire social network. It is what it is because it exists since 2004. You'll probably not clone that in one week. But you can clone a friend feature, a like feature, a messaging feature, the groups feature. You can clone simplified versions of these features. Now the alternative is that you simply build these evergreen apps everyone knows. You can build a blog, you can build a shop or the good old to-do list app. I know that everyone hates the to-do list app and I don't use it in my tutorials because everyone hates it. But it exists for a good reason because it has all four CRUD operations in it and therefore it often would be a good starting point to 
practice working with that new database or with that new framework because you're forced to do all these common operations, creating, reading, updating, deleting, and do that in a relatively simple interface where you don't have to worry about too many other aspects of the app. So also feel free to build a to-do app if you feel like it. So these are the kinds of apps you could build. And app really is a loose term here. I mean also features of that app. So if you're interested in building a shopping cart, well then don't focus on the checkout. Don't care about how an administration area could look like. Simply add some dummy data into your app and focus on the feature you are interested in. Now with both approaches, you will have a certain goal, you have certain features you want to implement, you want to get done, you want to have in a working state, and you should focus on these features and leave out the unimportant rest as I just mentioned. And if you do that, well then you'll face challenges, you'll face problems, something doesn't work as you expected, or it did work at first but then you detect some logical issue, well don't give up. This is the point where you will start learning. This is the point where you need to Google and you'll find blog posts on uh, how uh, another person solved that authentication process. You'll find Stack Overflow discussions. You'll find YouTube tutorials. You might find paid courses that help you. So you will then find resources that help you with that problem or those problems you're facing. So that is the part where you then have to pull through and not give up and also not ask anyone else to solve it for you, but really dig into the problem and solve it yourself. This can include asking for some support or asking some question on Stack Overflow, but it does not mean that you should say, I want this, how do I do that? Yeah, you'll not learn anything. You can also just uh, go to an agency and tell them they should build your website in that case. You'll not become a better developer by that. So this is the practice part. This is what I understand under this term. Obviously, as always, please dive into the comments and dive into the discussion and let me hear your thoughts about this. How do you practice? What is your approach to that? Now, practicing is great, but practicing also includes that you will implement solutions following certain patterns or best practices. And you should always challenge these existing solutions. Obviously, they do exist for a good reason and most of them or a lot of them might be great or maybe all of the best practices currently are great and the best practice for a good reason. But how do best practices emerge? Well, they do emerge because people try to solve a problem. And chances are that this problem has already been solved before, but maybe not in a way that suffices for your exact use case. Maybe not in a way that you can implement or that you want to implement, or maybe you just want to explore other alternatives. So that is how best practices emerge. You question existing solutions. You rarely will have the case that no solution exists for a problem. That might be the case too, but often you have some kinds of patterns, but then you can question them. And either you find a solution that works better than the existing solution, or you have one that is worse. In the better case, a new best practice might emerge. And of course, that always is then validated because you might share your solution on blog posts and if it is really good and solves a common problem, other people might pick it up and that is how such a practice might emerge. Well, and if it's worse than existing solutions, A, it might still work for you and if it doesn't like introduce a clearing problem like a security issue, memory leaks. So if it works for you, well, you might also stick to it. But you can, of course, then also go back to the existing solutions if that is fine for you. The idea here really is that you should always challenge what you're being taught. And obviously, this includes my tutorials too. In all these videos and courses, I do teach best practices, I do teach common patterns. But this does not mean that you should never ask whether you can do it differently or better because often there also simply is more than one solution. It's not like that for every problem you might be facing, there's exactly one right path. This is not the case. So definitely have a look at the left and the right and find out different ways of solving something. Now, last but not least, discussing and contributing, and this really is a core part of becoming a better web developer. We can split this into the two parts and let's start with discussing. What does discussing even mean? Well, discussing means that you dive into typical community forums like Stack Overflow, Quora, YouTube comments, or also Twitter. You can follow opinion leaders there. You can follow other developers and they will retweet tweets of other developers, which you then also can follow. And this allows you to stay up to date with trends 
Because if you browse around, if you uh, Google for certain solutions or problems, you will find patterns, you might find new patterns, you might find new trends. Someone is mentioning that Vue.js is a really cool framework coming up and that is solving that problem you're having in React in a better way, at least in the opinion of that person. So diving into the community, and if it's just read only, will already get you very far. And indeed, if you search for certain problems or errors you might be encountering, you will often end up on Stack Overflow, as we all know. And that is pretty common, pretty normal, and a pretty good reason of why Stack Overflow exists and why it is so popular. Even if you're just reading, you will find a lot there. Now, of course, you can also talk. You can share your opinion. You can dive into discussions. You can share your opinion in the YouTube comments. You can share your opinion on Twitter. You can tweet your own solutions, your own questions too. So you can also contribute actively. That is probably better than just reading, though I will say just by reading, you're also forced to save your problems on your own because asking always is easy. If you read only and then you take that knowledge and you play around until a problem is solved, that will get you very far. But of course, it's also not always about solving problems. So sharing your opinion on new solutions, on new frameworks, on new languages, on hybrid apps versus native apps, all that is very valuable and makes the community what it is. Just make sure that you also question but accept other opinions. Too often in the internet, and we all know that, we have a toxic discussion culture. And if you can't discuss without telling other people how dumb they are, or that their opinion is absolute bullshit, or that they should become whatever, because they are certainly too dumb to be a programmer, well, then you are the one who's too dumb. It's as simple as that. If you have to discuss, or that's not even discussing, if you have to talk, to other people like this, if you have to put other people down to, to feel better yourself, well, then everyone's better off if you just leave. And I'll be that honest. Now, thankfully, we have a very friendly discussion culture in uh, the YouTube comments of this channel and also on Udemy and everywhere. I can't complain. But too often you read it and once in a time there is such a comment on this channel too or somewhere else or I see that our student talks to another student in a very rude way. And I don't like that. And nobody likes that. And nobody learns from that. You're, you're not doing anything good if you're talking like this. Now, chances are you're not doing that. But also if you see someone else joining a discussion like that, well, feel free to also tell them um, which benefit they're adding, which is none. So discussing, awesome, but in a friendly way, respecting others, obviously. Last but not least, also discuss problems and solutions and share links. So contribute to a community by sharing solutions you came up with or great blog articles you found with other people, great tutorials you found, share them, share them around because everyone benefits if we all find good solutions, good discussions faster. So that's the discussion part. And fittingly, I talked a lot about it, I guess. So what do I mean with contributing? Contributing is all about sharing, and we have this on the discussion part a bit too, but here I mean more well focused on the code. So you can, for example, contribute to open source projects on GitHub. And that is an awesome way of building a portfolio too, by the way. You can also contribute in the Udemy Q&A section of courses you are enrolled, or in the YouTube comments, or you can create your own tutorials, or write your own blog articles. This obviously is the part where you are a bit more exposed. And therefore, this is something a lot of people refrain from. I can only encourage you to do that. Contribute to other people's projects, share your knowledge. You, once in a while, you'll find people who don't like it. And that is fine. And you might even be able to learn something from the negative feedback you're getting. But you'll also get a lot of positive feedback. And you will learn a lot for yourself. Plus, you help other people. And with the open source contribution, as well as tutorials, you also build a portfolio which you can show to possible employees. So that's not to underestimate as well. Contributing also means that you help others, that you share your code, that you work on open source projects. Well, basically what I said already, I guess. And that you should learn from mistakes you make. So don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to share your code and others might find an error in it or tell you that you're not following a certain practice. Well, you would have known otherwise, right? 
So only because other people told you, you learn something that helps you improve your code for the future. And isn't that what you're trying to do? So even if it's not the most pleasant feeling at first to be corrected or to be challenged, it is the point where you will learn a lot and where you can grow a lot, therefore. Now, last but not least, also consider donating to certain open source initiatives. Like for example, Vue.js. You can become a Patreon for that. You can also become a Patreon for many YouTube channels. Not for this one right now. But you can support us and me by buying my Udemy courses. You basically donate some money and you even get a course in return. And other projects, other channels might not have that model, but they allow you to become a Patreon and support them uh, monetarily through that. And that is worth considering. If you get some extra bucks to spare, consider that because you're taking advantage of the resources they're providing. It's also fair to give back some of that uh, share. So these are my thoughts on growing as a developer. And I hope that these thoughts are helpful to you. I hope this maybe gives you something to think about or some new aspects. Maybe you already knew all of that and I now wasted like 15 minutes of your time or something like that. I'm very sorry about that. But please join the discussion, so exactly what I talked about in this video, and let me hear your thoughts about this video and your thoughts about all these topics and what else you know what people should do or what might be helpful. So hopefully see you in future videos. Bye.